Hello, everybody. Welcome to my accounting short number two, in which I'm going to discuss some accounting basic terminologies with you. So as I said before, I'm going to start with financial accounting. So I'm going to start with the basic terms like statement of profit and loss, statement of financial position, statement of cash flows, leading on to what do you mean by capital drawings, sales, purchases, cost of goods sold, and then assets, liabilities, how many types of assets are there? How many types of liabilities are there? And so on. So we are going to learn in steps. I'm going to share my screen for the PowerPoint I have prepared for today. So if you give me a second. I'm going to put it on slideshow. So you already know now the learning objective for today. So learning objective will be to understand the terms of accounting so that we have a strong foundation in financial accounting. So as I said in accounting short number one, there are three types of financial statements which any business will have to prepare. The first one is statement of profit and loss. It's also known as statement of comprehensive income or you can call it income statement or you can call it profit and loss account. So there are various names of it. The second statement is statement of financial position which is also known as balance sheet. And the final statement is statement of cash flows or cash flow statement. Now, when you talk about these three statements, statement of profit and loss, you prepare it for one accounting period. Now, accounting period is normally for 12 months. But if it's the first year of your business, it's, it can be shorter or longer than 12 months. But normally it will be, or usually it will be prepared for one accounting period, which is 12 months. This statement will summarize all the transactions of the business during the year. So you have to absolutely list each and everything. It is like a video recording. So when you do the video recording, each and every movement of that occasion will be captured. In the same way in statement of profit and loss account, each and every transaction will be captured. The next statement is the statement of financial position or balance sheet, as I said before. You prepare it as at the end of the year. So you can say you prepare it on 31st of December or 31st of March or 30th of June. It depends when is your year end. But you prepare it at the end of the year and it's like a snapshot. So when you take a photo, you capture that one particular movement in that photo. So a statement of financial position is at a particular date. So if you talk about the difference between statement of profit and loss and statement of financial position, statement of profit and loss will be for the whole accounting period. It will tell you the performance of the business in that one accounting period. Whereas statement of financial position will tell you the position of the business as at a particular date. And finally, you prepare statement of cash flows again you will prepare statement of cash flows for one accounting period so say for example 12 months and it will show you how the business has generated cash and where it has actually spent its cash so it's the inflow and outflow of cash from the business that will be actually shown by statement of cash flows so these are three financial statements which any uh, accountant will need to prepare the first basic terminology now is the capital. Now, capital is the amount which is invested by the owner of the business in the business. Now, there are some people who actually um, confuse capital with cash. So yes, mostly owner invests cash in his business, but it can be invested in other shapes and forms as well. So if you start your business and if you um, start using the garage of your home as office space, that will be capital as well. And if you bring in some inventory um, in the business instead of cash, so some goods in the business, that will be your capital as well. So please remember capital is not only the amount which has been invested in cash, it is in kind as well. But it is the amount which has been invested by the owner of the business in the business. The next term, drawings. Now, owner works in the business for his business, and obviously he will need to take a 
out some money for his personal expenditure as well. And that money which he withdraw out of the business for his personal expenditure is actually known as drawings. So drawings is the money which has been taken out of the business by the owner of the business for his personal use. That's the drawings. The next term, very important. We all know this term sales. So whether we are accounting professional or not, we know the term sales. What is sales? Sales is the income which you earn from selling goods or services. So whatever business you do, so if you do the business of selling retail goods, so when you sell something, for example, if you're selling uh, the drinks, if you're selling the drinks, when you sell this bottle of uh, Fanta, that will be your sale. If you own a shop, if you take the example of Marks and Spencer, when they sell the clothes, that's sales for them. Sales is also known as revenue, turnover, or income. So revenue, turnover, income, and sales, they mean the same thing. Is the income earned by the business by selling goods or services. Now, if you're thinking, how can you sell services? You can sell services. So for example, educational institutions, they don't sell any goods. So I'm not talking about if they're selling books, they sell services. When they teach students and they charge fees for that teaching, that's selling services. So that's your sales. The next important term which you should be aware is purchases. Now purchases is the amount which the business incurs. So it's like spending for them. They buy the goods which they sell to their customers. To make the sales happen, they need to do the purchases first. Obviously, if you are a manufacturer, you are not going to purchase the goods which you are selling to your customers, but you are going to purchase raw materials and so on so that you can manufacture the goods and then sell it to your customers. In short, purchases are the cost which is incurred by the business in buying the goods which they sell to their customers to make the sales ha happen. Cost of goods sold or cost of sales. Cost of goods sold is known as COGS, cost of sales. They are the same thing, they're just the nicknames. Now cost of sales in very, very simple terminology. And if there is no opening or closing stock or inventory of goods is equal to your purchases. The cost of the goods which you are trying to sell to your customers and that's purchases. So whatever money you spend, in making the sales happen, that's known as cost of goods sold or COGS. And if there is no inventory, if you are buying and you are selling the same amount of goods, you're not keeping anything in the business for future use and there is nothing unsold, your cost of goods sold should be equal to your purchases. But life is not that simple. We always have some stock. It might not be that you were not able to sell it, it might be that you want to keep some stock or inventory in the business for future use for emergency. In that case, your COX will be your opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. So opening stock, which is left from last month, plus purchases, which you purchased this month, minus closing inventory, which is unsold at the end of the month, which you are going to take or carry forward to the next month. So if you have cost of sales, then opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory will calculate COGS for you. We will do the calculation of COGS, uh, then it will be the time for us to do a uh, prepare statement of profit and loss. But for now, I wanted you to know the meaning of it. So COGS is actually the cost which you have incurred in making your sales happen. The next term, very, very important term, asset. Asset are the items which are owned by the business, O-W-N, owned by the business. So if I own something, I've got the right to use it. Various examples, you can have land and building, you can have plant and machinery, you can have motor vehicles, you can have stock of goods, which is also known as inventory and you can have cash. Your bank account, 
that's your asset as well. Anything which you own is your asset. Opposite of asset is a liability in accounts. Liability is the amount owed, O-W-E-D. Amount owed by the business to third parties is known as a liability. Now, please, please remember this phrase third parties is very important because the amount which the business owe to its owner is known as capital. And the amount which is owed by the business to third parties is known as a liability. So if you have taken a loan from a bank or from any other individual, that's your liability. If you are buying goods from your suppliers on credit, that's a liability. If you have a bank overdraft, which is another term which we will do, not today, but um, um, in future, bank overdraft is basically when you do not have enough money in your account, but you can still write a check. You have to agree that overdraft with, with your bank, that's bank overdraft. So it's using bank's money with an agreement with the bank. That's a liability. Liability is something which you owe to third parties. Now, assets are actually of two types. You have current assets and you have non-current assets. When you talk about non-current assets, they are the assets which the business intend to use for more than one accounting period. So as I said, accounting period is usually one year. So if you intend to use your asset for more than one year, that's known as a non-current asset. Examples, you can have land and building, you can have office equipment, furniture and fittings, uh, plant and machinery, and so on. So those are your non-current assets. Anything or any asset which you intend to use for more than one year. Current assets, that's the second classification of your assets, current assets. These are the assets which are held by the business for less than one year. So for less than one year, if you hold something or you intend to use it within that one year, that's known as your current asset. Examples, like if you have inventory, because you hold the inventory to resell it, you never intend to in, uh, hold inventory for more than one year. Or the cash in your till or your bank account, that's all your current asset, whether you use it or not, but you intend to use it within one year, that's current asset. So repeating, assets are of two types, current assets which you intend to use within one year, and non-current assets which you intend to use or intend to hold for more than one year, 12 months. Again, in the same way as I said, liabilities are of two types as well. You have current liabilities and you have long-term liabilities or non-current liabilities. When you talk about current liabilities, current liabilities are the amounts that are due to be paid within one year. So you have borrowed the money from somebody and you have promised to pay them or your agreement with them is to pay that amount back within one year. That's your current liability. And the most popular example of a current liability is your trade payables. Trade payables is the amount which you owe to your suppliers. It's also known as creditors. So if you are buying goods on credit, Normally, your agreement could be with them that you will pay them in 30 days time or 60 days time or 90 days time. It depends upon your relationship with your suppliers. But they will not give you credit period for more than a year. So anything which you have agreed to pay within one year is known as a current liability. The second classification of a liability is a non-current liability. Non-current liability is the amount which is due to be paid for after more than one year. So if you uh, take a long-term loan from a bank, uh, say for example, five years loan. So you have to pay back that loan to your bank within five years. That's a long-term liability or a non-current liability because it's not due to be paid within one year. And remember, the part of that loan which you will pay within one year is still your current liability. So if you are paying in parts, 
the part which is due to be paid within one year out of that five year loan is a current liability, but the remaining amount is a non current liability or a long term liability. That's it for today. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, just so you know, short number three, we will continue with the basic term accounting terminology. So I think I will need, um, yeah, just one more shot to finish all financial accounting terminologies, which I believe you will need before we can actually start doing um, a topic like double entry. Um, so basic accounting terminology to be continued on Thursday as well. Uh, stop sharing. If you like my recordings, if you want to learn accounting and finance without help of any books or extra tuitions, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like my videos, please watch and like my other videos too. Thank you. Namaste.